So welcome back to Highwood Woodworks. I'm Tim Eggers. My little brother called the other day and wanted to know how to put a bow tie in a board. Some people call them Dutchman keys, but I call them bow ties. Typically used to, to reinforce a crack in a piece and stabilize it a little bit. Sometimes they're just simply decorative. So this is how I do it with a, with a template and a router. Uh, this is our template, bow tie template, of course. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna position that such that Part of our bow tie is on each side of the crack. I like to center it right down the middle. So we obviously we've got a, our, our bow tie shape here. We're gonna set the points of this right over the top of that crack. And then I gotta stabilize that. So I wanna tape it down as best I can. What I like to do is get uh, the tape, put it to the top of my template, put it down on the side. I don't want it to tuck right tight into that corner. I want there to be an angle there so that I can put a little bit more pressure on there, put tension on it, hold it in place. I'm gonna put it everywhere I have an opportunity to uh, contact the board. We've got a pretty narrow piece of maple here. A little crack in it. Let's go across the end here. Tape that down again, like I said, as best as we can. And I want that to be real, real stable and putting that tape in there at an angle, not going straight into the corner and out. It gives me a chance to run back across there and force that tape down. It makes my piece real, real solid, real, real stable. So we've got that. Get our tape off to the side. Now with my router and my template, you'll see I've got the white sides guide set up here in the bottom of my router. And there's a little bushing on there, a little bearing on there. When we're cutting the hole in our piece, we want that bushing to be in place. When we start cutting our bow tie as, a, uh, as our insert that's gonna go in there, we're gonna take that off. I've got the bow tie cutting bit in here and I've got my depth on my router uh, gauged here. And I've got that set to where I'm about a quarter inch deep. It doesn't need to be anything more than that. So I've got that set in my depth stop. So I've, like I said, I've got about a quarter of an inch below my uh, bearing and all here. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to set it inside. The key to making these fit really tight is you've got to run that bushing and that bearing right close to that template all the time. And sometimes that's easier done if you take two passes at it, take part of your cut initially, and then lower your blade or your bit all the way down to the stop and then hit it again. So this is gonna make a little bit of noise. So hang on with me a little bit. We're gonna go around this twice. I always like to start in that corner furthest from me and start there. And if you haven't done this before, guide it around, get a little practice getting it around there to make sure you kind of know that feel of that bushing against that template. If it feels like it's dragging a little bit, get a little Johnson's paste wax or something similar and wax it up, it'll slide a whole lot better. So with that in mind, here we go. We're gonna fire this up and make a little noise. We'll go around twice and then we'll be right back with you. Bring that bit right back up out of there, set it aside. And if this was smell-o-vision like they have on the old original Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory movie, you would smell that that's burning a little bit, so it obviously tells me that my bit's a little bit on the dull side. So I'm gonna pop this off and show you what we've got here. We've got a nice outline for our bow tie. Take our little bent top clamp off. That's what we've got. Our nice little bow tie outline there. We're gonna clamp this back down in. Now I've got this material that I need to take out of there in order for our object piece to fit down in there. So I've got my bits out of the way. I've got another router bit set up with an upcut spiral bit and I can go in there and I can basically, I can freehand to take all of that excess material out of there. We'll get that set up and do that here real quick. This is gonna take a little bit, so we'll probably do this in, in uh, time lapse so you can get the hang of it. But we've gotta get all that material out of there before we can go ahead and make our object piece, our bow tie to fit down in there. So hang on while we get this one set up, we'll be right back. 
So we're back to our other router now. We've got our upcut spiral bit uh, fed into it and locked down. I've got my depth stop such that I'm about a quarter of an inch deep because that's all it really needs to be. I'm going to do this in multiple passes. And being that routers are obnoxiously loud, get your ear protection out, cover your ears up, and we're going to freehand this. We'll get this done here pretty quick, so hang on. Here we go. Here, for whatever reason, we don't go. And as you can see, routing out bow ties makes a mess. Covered with good old everyday American maple sawdust. So there we've got our object piece cut out, our bow tie uh, recess is all cut out. And I'm gonna take a chisel and just go in here and just finish up some of those last little corners, clean it up real quick. Let's grab this one, this one will work. A few little spots there where it might be a little high and there might be a little bit of sawdust jammed down in there. So I'm just gonna clean those up, make sure I've got a good flat surface down there. And something I like to do to make sure these corners are nice and sharp is I'll take the back of my chisel and I'll lean it against that face and just rock it up into that corner just to pair that little round part that's left behind there from the roundness of the bit and just pair that corner just sharp enough to just make that corner look a little neater, look a little sharper. Get that in there. Don't have to be anything but the very top of it. Just something for that insert to follow and just leave a nice sharp edge on it. Roll it up into there. Roll it over here. And now I've got nice sharp corners. Our recess for our bow tie is cut out and ready to go. Next we'll switch to making our bow tie. We're going to make that out of a contrasting color. In this case it's going to be walnut. So we'll show you how to change over the, uh, the, the cutting bit to do this. So we'll be right back. So here we are cutting out the actual bow tie itself. I've taken my router here and the little bushing that goes on there for cutting the hole out, I've got to take that off to compensate for the width of the blade. So I've got a smaller guide bushing that's going to go on to our template here. I'm going to take a just a small wood screw and I'm going to attach our template real good to our object piece. In this case, we grab a little piece of walnut to run around here with. Make our bow tie with. So those are done and out of our way. And now the, the important thing with this is we've got to make sure that this bushing rides right up tight inside this template to make sure that it cuts that bow tie out to fit perfectly into the hole that we've got. So we'll probably take two short passes with this as well. Let's check the depth of our cut again. And we're right where we need to be. So I'm going to set this up with our plunge router. We're going to practice making our cut here. We're all good there. We're going to get this on there. This is going to be a little noisy. So uh, we'll time lapse this for you to make it go by a little quicker and a lot less noise. Hang on. Okay, so we're back here. We're going to cut this out real quick, making sure again that we're nice and tight up to our template and with our router. You know, and if I plug this in, guess what will happen? It'll go a whole lot faster. I always like to let my router come to a complete stop before I pick it up off of my object piece. It's just a safety thing and I always turn it away from me as well so that cutter is pointed way off of where I am. Let's take these screws out and show you what we've got here for our bow tie. And of course I strip the screw out. So now the challenge is going to be getting this thing off of my board.
There we're out. We're going to take these screws and move them off of our bench so as not to get in the way of our good material. Those are done and out of the way. Let's release this from our bench clamp. There we have the outline of our bow tie. Now we simply need to extract it from this piece of walnut. And I like to do that by taking it over to the jointer and just joining the back off until that bow tie comes loose. So let's step over to the jointer and show you how to extract that. So we're over here at the jointer. We've got our bow tie cut into our walnut with our template. I'm simply gonna remove enough of the material off the back of it with face joining it here on our jointer to get that bow tie to come loose. It'll only take a couple passes. There's our bow tie out of our object piece. Big thing there, always use the push pads. Always, always, ever. Never even think of trying to do that without the push pads on your jointer. Let's take it back over to the bench, cut the excess off, and put it into our object piece. So we're back at our bench. We've got our piece of maple in the vices here on the top. Our bow tie comes out. There's a little bit of extra material on the sides here, on the edges. So we just simply take our chisel and knock those off of there just to get rid of anything that happens to be hanging on there. Always cutting downhill. And then I take my chisel here and I put just a little bit of a chamfer on that bottom edge just to help it guide itself into that hole a little easier on all of those edges and that just doesn't need to be much but just a little bit of a chamfer just to give it a little wiggle room always on that bottom taking off any excess that came off with it and there we go we've got our object ready to go a little bit of a chamfer off the back here we'll do that then i want to experiment with it a little bit just touch it in there to see if it's going to fit in that hole just like we want it to i think it's going to go quite well then what I'll do, I like to glue it in the place, of course. We're gonna take our glue bottle here, just run a little bit out on our glue block, grab our little flux brush, brush it in there. The biggest thing is I want the side walls of the opening to have a good bit of glue on because that's where the hold is really gonna come. Let's put a little bit more on there. Get those side walls coated real well, and then we'll get some here on the bottom as well. So I want plenty of glue in there for it to hold. It's gonna be a pretty snug fit, but I still want the glue to create that final bond for it. Set that aside. This is our downside for our bow tie. We're gonna get that adjusted in there just a little bit. I'm gonna grab my little smacker and just kind of get it started. Make sure it's going in the right direction. You don't have to hit it too hard until it decides to not be cooperative. Then you change out this one for this one. And then you wind back up and you let it eat. It's in there now, never gonna come out again. Very good, so we've got our bow ties in our piece now. We're a little bit proud, which is what we wanna be. We don't wanna have it be too shallow, so we make it so it's a little bit proud at the top. We're gonna grab a good old everyday smoothing plane here, the Stanley number four. I like to put my crayon on it so it slides better. And we're just gonna take that excess off of there and get it down so it's plain nice and flat. Nice and flush with our board. Almost there. One thing about the bow ties is the grain for the bow tie is running you know, lengthwise this way. The grain for our object piece is this way. You always want to have those at close to a 90 degree angle. So there's not an opportunity for this board to expand and stretch on this. It's going to hold it in place really well. So your bow tie always goes across the grain of your object piece is the point. And if you use a good contrasting wood, a contrasting color, it gives a, a kind of an aesthetic appeal to it, makes it look really cool. Almost there, almost where we wanna be. 
And you could sand this off as well, or you could take a rasp to it, but I just like to use the hand plane to get it done. It'll clean it up real nice, and it's gonna look real nice when it gets in there. And there we have it. A beautiful bow tie, nice and flush to the face of our piece. And get rid of that crack that we drew on there, clean it up all real nice. And there's, by the way, nothing that says you can't play it across the grain. Cleans it up real nice. And there we have our bow tie covering the crack in our piece. A real nice way to do that. Go ahead and comment down below if you would. Obviously, subscribe if you can. If you got any questions, put them down there and we'll do our best to answer them for you. Thanks for stopping by.